All right, year seven. It's an next lesson in our history learning from home timetable. Uh, be- before we start today, I do want to make a couple of things clear over the coming weeks. Your history uh, lessons are going to be slightly different. So you are still going to receive one EduCreations video a fortnight instead of the usual three that you are now. Uh, but after half term, over the three lessons you would have over the space of two weeks, you'll be having one EduCreations video, one live Zoom lesson with me and probably another class from Year 7, and then there'll be a, a self-marking Firefly quiz for you to complete the test of your knowledge, and that will all be on the same topic. So you'll do one topic every two weeks. So so I think we've got... Um, Excuse me, I'm eating, I'm eating some sweets whilst I'm recording, which I shouldn't do. Um, you know, we've got the Vikings coming up, so you do a Zoom lesson on, fi- on the Vikings, Hedge Creations on the Vikings, and then a test or a quiz on the Vikings. And it'll be a little bit different, cover different things, but hopefully you get a good picture by the end. Today, though, we've got an Hedge Creations video. It's life in the Middle Ages. Now, just quickly, my handwriting is probably going to be a little bit more readable today. Still not very good, but more readable. Uh, and that's because Mr. Hall has been kind enough to lend me an Apple pen to write with on my iPad. So I'm testing that out today, and hopefully we're going to see a bit of an improvement in my handwriting. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. So today we're doing Life in the Middle Ages. We've got two winning objectives. We're going to describe the different interpretations of the Middle Ages. Now remember from our first lesson of the intro to the Middle Ages, we saw, said how you had ancient times... And you had uh, modern times. In the Middle Ages, that bit in the middle from about 500 AD uh, to about 1500 AD. And we're going to look at what life was like for the normal people in that time. It's all well and good doing lessons on famous people and kings and queens and military leaders and politicians. Yes, they are important in history, but are they as important as um, the normal person who's just do, you know doing their thing, going to work, trying to survive? They often bring about more change than the people who rule them. So, uh, we're going to focus on some, some more ordinary people from history. It's very important to remember who the, who the people are. Those of you who are looking at studying history long term and you're thinking towards college, uni, uh, in, a, in a career, this is something called social history. And it's the, it's the, it's the history of the people, not, not the military history or the political history. It's the social. So, what did the people do in their day-to-day business? Um, and I... Obviously, that word interpretation I'm going to go into in a second is a reason of underlining. And then we're going to evaluate which interpretation is the most accurate. So we're going to look at different ways people interpret the Middle Ages. Then you you guys are going to decide which one you think is the most accurate. Um, by evaluate, I mean come to a judgment. So you have a few options in front of you, and you decide which one you agree with most. Now, history is changing a little bit in Key Stage 3. Uh, if you're in, you're, you're all in Year 7. Next year is going to be a bit different from what you had in Year 7. Uh, for when you're year in, in year eight. I've made some changes. Every lesson you're going to be focusing on a skill or every topic will be focused on one skill and then several key concepts. There's a big list which I've got, which I'll share with you when we're back in school. The skill we're doing today is interpretation. Now, interpretations is about how different people can view the same thing. So two people might look at it and read a book about the Middle Ages and one person might think the Middle Ages was great. One person might think it was horrible. That's a, an interpretation. There's no right or wrong. It's just which one do you agree with more? We're going to go into two concepts today, chivalry and class. Chivalry is to do with uh, the honour of knights, uh, princes, princesses, that sort of thing. And basically, it's all about how a knight wouldn't kill another knight in battle if he's wounded. Or, you know, you'll see a video of men and women would have a big dance at a banquet and it's all very noble and posh and lovely. And class, this isn't class like you're in class, I don't know, 7x3 or whatever. It's more to do with the class which you are in terms of in society. So I'm sure you've heard the terms working class... And middle class, and they refer to sort of how much money you have and the sort of things you can buy. And we're going to go into those today. Cool, let's go. First thing, I want, you know, I'm going to make you watch a couple of movie clips today. There's The Knight's Tale, uh, 2001. They're both comedy movies. A Dance from Gelder Lancy movie clips by Movie Clips. Uh, If you go on to that, you don't need to watch them to start. Maybe from about there-ish. It's when they start dancing. It's a comedy. You won't find it very funny. From about there. And then this one by Monty Path. And I'm sure you've heard of him. Your family's probably a big fan of him. Uh, You can watch 
there to about here. You don't need to watch all of them. Stop about there. Stop about there. Um, again, they're both comedies. Focus on and write down maybe three or four words for each one. How do they present the Middle Ages? Did they present it positively, negatively? Uh, what sort of words come to mind? So I'll give you a hint. We, when we talked about chivalry, about knights and princesses and princes, I think chivalry is a word you can use here, for example. I won't say any more. For this one, I'm going to put hard, and I won't say any more. Uh, so have a go for me. Pause the video. Go and watch these two and make notes on your paper of what sort of ideas you get from the Middle Ages. What are the interpretations of the Middle Ages from these? Cool. Hopefully you've done that. Clip one, I would say you've got that idea of chivalry. Now, it was all very posh. They were in a big hall. They were having a banquet. There was ladies in dresses who were princesses and men and fine gowns who were princes. People were sat at the table. And there was nice music playing. They were all doing a very posh and coordinated dance. So chivalry, banquet, posh, royal. Because it looked like they were like part of a royal family. Very important. Uh, rich. Uh, classy. Any of those words. You might have more and you can tick over with a green pen if you've got them. Uh, with Club 2, it looked more hard, more grueling. Uh, of course, um, these, the joke about it is, obviously, these are peasants, and they have a very clever argument about why they're poor, and it goes on about the systems, you know, and, and yeah, how it is unfair on people. I think that's another word you have, unfair, grueling, hard, uh difficult, you know, it's dirty, that sort of stuff. So you've got two interpretations. You've got interpretation one and interpretation two. And the question we've got to ask ourselves today is which one is right? Well, not really which one is right. Which one do we agree with? There's no right or wrong. Some of you will say one and one, some of you will say the other. Some of you will say in the middle. They're all correct as long as you can back them up with evidence. I've got to stress, folks, I've marked your... Um, uh, this explain to consequence the Norman Conquest. Some of you put consequences without explaining them or without putting facts in. If you don't put facts, but if you make a claim in history or you say something and you haven't got facts, you're not going to get any marks. Always, always have facts. All right. So, somebody's making a film and you've been hired as a researcher or as researchers by a film director who wants to make an adventure film set in the Middle Ages. She, the director, wants to show the reality of life in the medieval town and country. So let's imagine a movie. Uh, I'll, let's come up with a movie together. It's an action movie. So let's have a, a, a title character. Um, I don't know. What can it be called? Stephen. Um, looking around the room. Stephen. Stephen Sandwich. There we go. And he's a peasant who has to... I don't know, what can he do? He has to defeat evil. I'd say he defeats evil. There we go. Uh, and, yeah, so he's a farmer. Put a little hat on. There we go. Uh, and give him his little pitchfork. And this is like his iconic weapon is the pitchfork. Yeah, I have to write any of this down. I'm just trying to... I don't know what I'm doing. He's <laughs> having some fun. There's his pitchfork. This is Stephen Sandwich, and he's a peasant in England, and he's got to go fight, a, I don't know, a dragon. Who knows? Uh, but the the way he was making he was directing the film is hard. He was a researcher. He says, right, you need to tell me how medieval life, life in a town and a village, should be portrayed. So when I make my movie about Stephen Sandwich who has to fight his dragon, it's accurate and it really reflects medieval times. So I'm going to show you a lot of evidence. There's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, five areas. So if you want to, you could split your paper up. You only need probably two or three boy points for each one. I, mean, I, I don't know, you can split them into five. I mean, you know, you could do like that. That's five. One, two, three, four, five. You could do, um, I don't know, how does one, two, three, four, five, something like that. It's up to you. Or you could just do, you know, one. I'm not fussed, however you want to make notes. Um, right, I'm going to take you through how a town, how a village, how entertainment, how food, and how the peasant revolt went. And you need to decide which interpretation of medieval life or middle age life you want to have in the movie. So let's start. So your first bit you need to make notes on is a typical town street. So your buildings are timber framed, which means they're sort of, they've got wood to keep them standing. Rubbish is thrown out into the street. There's no bins or, you know, there's no 
black and blue and brown bin or whatever you have where you are. Uh, you'd have pigs, farm yard animals just walking around um, eating the rubbish. The buildings are very closely packed. Uh, and because of the uh, wood, did, there'd be a fire. The shops would be in the front room, so you'd, your shop would be in the front and you'd live in the back. There'd be a lot of rats. Sewage would be passed down the middle of the street and have, like, a flushing toilet. You just went in a bucket and chucked it out the window. And the upper story would hang over the lower story to make sure everyone's got enough space, but that will cut off sunlight. So you need to make notes on a couple of the key points about what a town would be like, please. Just two or three key points. Try and describe what it would be like, because you're going to craft a letter to this director at the end saying how she should portray the Middle Ages in her movie. So make your notes. All right, a village scene. So a village scene, if, if you know, let's say the first scene, it's, what was his name? Stephen Sandwich wakes up in his town and then he's got to go fight the dragon he's got to go over to the villages to find the dragon so peasants clothing would be a bit like this uh you know you really need sort of terms you got your tunic your hood something called a coif and the hose which would be like long socks be a lot of weed in water mills which is like a uh, uh, a circular uh wheel which the water would pass through that will power things uh, be a lot of sewing, not sewing like with a needle, but sewing crops. Houses made of wood, mud, and straw, so a bit like that. Lots of ploughing the fields, uh, and basically people would be thinking this sort of thing. I must make sure I harvest enough for my family as well as for my lord and the church. So that was people's motivation. So you've got to think how, when they make their set designs to film the scenes for Stephen Sandwich and the the Curse of the Dragon, how are their village scenes going to look? So you need to make a couple of notes on that, please. Entertainment. So maybe there's a scene where Stephen Sandwich he, he goes on his adventure and he decides to um you know, he stops off at a, a village and they're having their annual fair and maybe there's a scene where, you know, that's like a comedy scene or something. And this is what would happen in, in the entertainment of the village. There'd be jousting, so that's when knights get on a horse and charge at each other with big sticks called lances and then hit each other. You have sword fights, plays, dancing, ball games, not the sort we know, but not not a million miles away from rounders. Board games. This one's the weirdest one. Watching punishments. People would quite enjoy and make a day out of going to watch someone get executed. So let's say someone was convicted of murder and they got hanged uh, in the town square. People would get there for a picnic and they'd have a great time at the execution. Weird, I know, but again, what sort? You got to think. That's what we've seen so far. Does this fit more with this interpretation or that interpretation for everyday life? Cool. Food. Um, so if a, if a butcher sold rotten meat to be put in the stock, large tends to take away food, send hot sheep's feet and little birds. Couldn't eat meat on a Friday because it's for religious reasons and people were more, uh, more religious in those days or there was a greater degree of Christianity. Uh, some bakers chew, uh, cheated uh, by adding sandal cobwebs to bread. You have black bread, beer, eggs, cheese, beans, corn, soup, stew, pot, uh, pottage, which is like a sort of stew, bacon, cabbage, cider and dogs. They would eat dogs. So that's the sort of thing they would eat. So uh, make your notes on what food was like. Again, maybe uh, Stephen Sandwich went to a banquet or, I don't know, he stopped in someone's house for a meal. Uh, does this sound healthy? Does it sound good? Again, play into that idea of what interpretation is correct regarding uh, the Middle Ages. Okay, the Peasant's Revolt. Now, this is the most simplistic summary of the Peasant's Revolt of all time. It is far more complicated. I've just done it like this to make it a little bit more understandable for this we might do a full lesson on it probably will yeah we will um so the peasants these people who were just farmers did not like being slaves and paying such high taxes so not all of them were slaves but some of them were paying such high taxes they decided to go and talk to the king to ask him to make things so they had a big march down to london to speak to the king all leaders of the revolt were hanged so they all died so again make a note on this and think you know what sort of society was this was it a fair one was it an unfair one was it a hard one and then use all of these and start thinking was it more like this one i've drawn on it i didn't mean to uh, was it more like this one or was it more like that one to make your notes on the peasant revolt cool so You've got to decide now which interpretation you think was correct. Was the it always terrible? Was town life easy? The peasants have some fun. It was always fun or exciting. Village lovers have sometimes peasants have a lot of fun. I mean, it didn't have to be one of those sections. You can come up with your own sentence. What you need to do is write a letter. Uh, there's Stephen Sandwich, and there's my uh, attempts at splitting my page into five. Um, so you could write a letter, and it could be called Dear I don't know, Director, or do you want to give her a name? You can. Dear Director, you should represent 
the Middle Ages in your movie as, then you can choose how it should be done. Uh, and if you want to choose um, any of them, you can if you, you want to cut your own one. So you might say as very difficult for peasants or anything of that nature. I'm not really fussed how you, what you do. Um, and I need to put uh, evidence to back this up. Whatever you've chosen, don't choose that one, choose something else. Uh, put some evidence in which you've got from there. You can do your own research if you want to on the internet to make it brilliant. And then obviously you finish it with a, uh, because you don't know the person's name, a yours faithfully. And then your name, so Mr. Baker. Or something like that. Uh, and I want, I want, uh, I'm in that sense, I don't want like a paragraph of information. Maybe use two or three bits of evidence. Uh, and then you're done for today. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Today we have learned the different interpretations of the Middle Ages. So one being very chivalrous and one being very difficult. And then we formed our own judgments. Uh, using evidence. Hopefully that's taught you something today. As I say, uh, you probably won't have, th well, you won't be having three uh, lessons um, of Fortnite and Edge Creations. You'll have one with a Zoom lesson and a, a quiz uh, after half term. So that's the plan, and I hope you get more details about that over and after half term. So thank you for watching today. Uh, I hope you've. Uh, Learn something and enjoy yourself. Hope you're all staying safe and looking after yourself and uh, making sure you keep it up with your work. And I'll see you when we do the next video. Auf Wiedersehen.